first and foremost uh, i welcome you all to this uh, very interesting meeting on a very interesting topic so i think you know most of the time these days you know cmes are on some new uh, oral anti diabetic drug something like an sglt2 inhibitor or something like a glp analog or maybe you know some new vildagliptin available in the market uh, this is something refreshing something new and very importantly something very important right because this is the we are living in a tropical country where infections are very common diabetes is also very common and recently we had this big uh, you know uh, covid 19 which actually exposed the core of the nutritional issues uh, the uh, immune issues and nutritional issues in diabetes patients so today we are going to discuss about diabetes and altered immune function and can nutrition have a role in such patients okay so let me uh, build to you a context for this talk so we all know and you know when we treat patients with diabetes there is one thing we always tell our patients that please control your diabetes well because if you don't do it a patient who is having diabetes becomes a very good uh, you know source of infection you know the patient is is somebody who if he or she develops an infection the likelihood of having complications are very very high and the risk of complications go from head to toe so i'll give you a list of these infections which are known as diabetes specific infections these infections occur mainly in patients who suffer from diabetes they are very rare in non diabetic patients now <clears throat> if you look at this list diabetic foot infection is very obvious you know patients with diabetes foot diabetic foot infection is a very very common uh, disease in our country especially in southern parts of india we don't see that commonly in northern parts of india but we see it in in uh, western part of india also including maharashtra and gujarat uh, and rajasthan we do see diabetic foot infections very commonly the second infection which you are all very well aware about is mucormycosis there was a u- recent huge epidemic of mucormycosis and you know uh, i was always of the believer that this uh, you know was perhaps related with covid induced diabetes a lot of patients who did not have diabetes uh, went on to develop diabetes because of covid 19 lot of the patients developed hyperglycemia because of steroids which were given lot of the patients had diabetes but did not know it and they were diagnosed for the first time with covid 19 and in our series of patients 100% of the patients who had uh, mucormycosis had hyperglycemia or diabetes so it was that common and hence it is it is very important to understand that hyperglycemia and mucormycosis have a very very intimate link urinary tract infection is very common in diabetic patients right including fungal uti we sit in an era where sglt2 inhibitors are commonly prescribed to diabetic patients and a lot of these patients go on to develop uh, U- uti and also genital urinary tract infection like candidiasis like balanitis vulvovaginitis and esophageal candidiasis now let me tell you one more thing uh a uh, a new onset of vulvovaginitis or a balanitis in a middle aged patient is also diagnostic of diabetes such patients should be tested for hyperglycemia or for diabetes and any patient you know especially a lot of times you see uh, endoscopy is being done and on endoscopy if they find a esophageal candidiasis against such patients must be checked for diabetes mellitus malignant otitis ex- externa caused by pseudomonas infection is again uh, a very diabetes specific infection emphysematous pyelonephritis very rare but such patients have very very severe hyperglycemia emphysematous cholecystitis similarly pyomyositis and necrotizing fasciitis all these conditions are commonly seen in diabe- uh, not common but they are seen mainly in diabetic individuals and these are something which are known as diabetes specific infections and most of these infections except for the candidiasis and uti the other infections are extremely severe can even be life threatening or limb threatening as in case of diabetic foot infection so hence it is very very important to understand the intimate relation between diabetes mellitus or uncontrolled diabetes mellitus and infection okay so what is the reason why patients with type 2 diabetes or patients with uh, you know type 1 or type 2 diabetes in general tend to have an altered immune system now the fundamental process here is neutrophil dysfunction i repeat the main process the main deficiency which happens in diabetic individuals is 
disorder dysfunctional neutrophils remember neutrophils are often the first line of defense against infections and when this first line of defense against infection becomes uh, deficient or becomes uh, you know important in such cases you go on to develop more severe infections and then other systems need to take into play so the immune system as you all know is divided into the innate immune system and adaptive or humoral immune system or adaptive or humoral uh, cellular immune system now the innate immune system is non specific initial defense against any infection right so that's the innate immunity and then you have the adapted antigen specific immune response that occurs with your b cell and t cell now as such the humoral immunity does not seem to be affected in diabetic diabetic individuals uh, however what is definitely affected is the there is some alteration in cell mediated immunity uh, including chemotaxis phagocytosis cytokine secretion in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes so what you really understand is that basically you have some defects some problems with the first line of defense the innate immunity and you have the cellular uh, adaptive immunity which is affected the humoral immunity that is the development of antibodies against antigen is generally not affected in diabetic individuals so they continue to mount an antibody response however they may have disfigured or or uh, important uh, i think that's the right word to use important neutrophil function and that's the key point here right so that is the adapt the, the neutrophil inf- uh, issues tend to be affected and hence you know often see that even viral infections which uh in you and me in patients who do not have diabetes they do not have any serious issues in patients with diabetes they tend to develop very very common problems in fact viral pneumonia is very common in diabetic individuals they often end up in hospitals uh even in icus and such patients you know may need uh, critical care support and may even succumb to the illness so if you look at the uh, immune cell functions altered in diabetic individuals you have chemotaxis uh phagocytosis and cytokine secretions are affected in diabetic individuals uh whereas the major immune cell types in uh, you know with altered function in individuals with diabetes there is reduced natural killer cell nk cells are reported there is increase of pro inflammatory macrophages in adipo especially in obese individuals and this was one of the reasons why you had a lot of obese people succumbing to covid-19 infection you have both increase and decrease of neutrophil but the function see the level number of neutrophils may change but the function of neutrophils is definitely reduced and the t cell subtypes show abnormal differentiation in patients with type 2 diabetes so these are all known uh, correlations between the infection and the uh, immune immune system and diabetes mellitus now does good glycemic control reduce the risk of infection that's a very interesting question the answer is yes so look at this study uh, done by bertoni which was published in diabetes care back in 2001 so they wanted to look at Uh, whether diabetes predicts infection related mortality and they wanted to clarify the extent to which this relationship is mediated by comorbid conditions that may themselves increase the risk of infection so this was a retrospective cohort study done in this in in a uh, you know relatively 30 to 70 so a broad spectrum of individuals about 9000 individuals were studied so what they found was that over a you know follow up of 12 to 16 years you had 36 infection related deaths among 533 individuals with diabetes versus you had 265 deaths in 8000 individuals without diabetes so it was you know if in terms of percentage uh, 4.7% patients in the diabetic cohort uh, died whereas you had only 1.5% per 1000 years having mortality which is quite glaring as far as the difference and this difference was statistically significant so the relative risk was two times so if you see you know uh, the rr relative risk was twice so there's almost doubling the risk of infection of infection related deaths and of course you know uh, there are other contributory factors like congestive heart failure uh, etc which were also contributing to that so overall the study concluded that overall the data suggests that diabetic individuals i think the right term is not diabetic adults the right term is persons living with diabetes are at a greater risk for infection related mortality and this excess risk may be mediated some of this may be mediated by cardiovascular disease which is also very common so it is very common to see sometimes infection triggering a myocardial infarction in a diabetic individual or uh, you know uh, leading to a stroke in a diabetic individual and leading to sometimes even hypoglycemia in diabetic individuals uh, these are all the reasons why they come to a hospital uh, you know i practice in zaidus hospital which is again a big hospital so we see a lot of these patients uh, day in day out uh, in practice okay <clears throat> so if we look at overall the uh, you know this is another study which looked at it published in 
again in diabetes care where they looked at the glycemic control and the risk of infection in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So what they wanted to see whether if you had good glycemic control, did it reduce the risk of infection in diabetic individuals? So it looked at basically they took, took the, it was a retrospective study. They looked at the data of the individuals and overall what they found was that long term infection was higher in patients with higher HPV1C. The higher HPV1C had, so you can see from this uh, very interesting chart. So you had, you know, if you look at uh, the uh, increased incidence of, uh, you know, the incidence rate of ratios and the HPV1C, you can clearly see that the higher the HPV1C, you had more infection related deaths, you had, you know, hospitalization was more and any infection, uh, you know, plus uh, prescription was uh, more. So overall, you know, the risk, not only the risk of infection was more, but the risk of complications because of infection, including deaths, was more as the HPA1C went higher. So overall, compared with patients without diabetes, those with diabetes and optimal glycemic control. So even if they had optimal glycemic control, there was still a slight increased risk about, you know, 40% increased risk of relative risk increase of uh, diabetes related complications. But if they had poor control, then the risk r further rose to almost four to five times. Uh, including infection uh, and and deaths and the patients with type 1 and poor control were at a greater risk so if they had type 1 with poor glycemic control the risk was even higher almost eight times so compared with patients with diabetes confirmed that risk of hospitalization was higher risk of deaths was higher uh, even if you took all the confounders in patients who had diabetes and infection so overall this study uh, both these studies conclude that the current analysis demonstrated a strong risk between hyperglycemia and uncontrolled diabetes and infection risk in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes and substantial proportions of infection can be attributed to poor glycemic control and interventions done to, uh, to reduce the risk of infection has been ignored by diabetes community and should be a high priority. Now what, what are such in interventions? Vaccinations, you know, are uh, reducing, uh, you know, social distancing. Uh, we are all aware, you know, wearing a mask wearing protective equipment, right? All these things could prevent infections and such things should be of very high priority in diabetic individuals because you can clearly see from the data, the risk of death, risk of complications, risk of hospitalization in diabetic individuals is much higher. Okay, so does nutrition contribute to that? Now, one aspect of nutrition is definitely very clear that people on the extremes of BMI definitely have higher risk of complications. So if the patient is extremely lean versus a patient who is extremely obese, in both these spectrums, the risk of infection and risk of death due to infection is very, very high. In fact, COVID-19, uh, we saw this very clearly that obese individuals have seen across the world. It was first reported from Italy where this saw, where this saw a clear discrepancy that obese individuals went on to develop more severe infections, hospitalization and death. Same thing was seen in United States of uh, America and when it came to India, again in India as well, if you see the data, the obese individuals tend to have more risk of complications and death. So, so extremes of, uh, you know, nutritional issues, right, uh, very lean versus very, uh, you know, uh, obese individuals in both the groups, the risk of infection and death is higher. Uh, especially if they have diabetes mellitus. Uh, but if does micronutrient deficiency play a role? Well, we all know that zinc, iron, vitamin B6 and other micronutrients have important role, especially as antioxidant mechanisms. They, uh, you know, uh, contribute to cell mediated immunity, phagocyte function, cytokine production, secretory antibody response, antibody, uh, you know, affinity and the complement system. So all these things are definitely affected by the micronutrient pathway. Right now, you know, again, during COVID-19, we saw a lot of patients going crazy with the use of zinc supplements, vitamin supplements and so on. Uh, zinc has definitely been shown to be effective in especially in influenzas, right? Zinc is very effective. In fact, I personally also use, uh, you know, zinc containing multivitamins when I do develop a flu. But, you know, uh, the data again is not very clear. Uh, in COVID-19, again, the data is not very clear. So I think, you know, uh, in terms of prescription, you should perhaps... Uh, you know, uh, do it judiciously instead of prescribing it to all patients. Uh, again, nutrient deficiencies uh, are often overlooked. So the problem is that, you know, you patients continue to have uh, nutrition deficiency, especially vitamin D deficiency is very common in our country. Again, you know, if you see there is a relation between vitamin D and COVID-19 related complications also, uh, you know, those who follow me, uh, you can check our endocrinology India uh, you know, uh, YouTube channel where we had a very interesting talk on vitamin D and 
uh, its effect on a non skeletal parameters including we discuss about covid 19 uh, you can check out that video uh, so overall it has been found that patients with vitamin d deficiency tend to have more complications and even higher mortality of course you know bearing confounding factors you know the correlation is there but uh, you know what is very also known that there are other vitamins also which may have impact on the uh, complications because of infections again we all also know that long term use of certain medicines can induce uh, vitamin deficiencies for, for example proton pump inhibitors is notorious to produce several uh, deficiencies as you can see from this list here uh, almost you know large number of vitamins and minerals uh, can be an issue uh, aspirin is associated with uh, iron deficiency and vitamin c deficiencies diuretics often lead to hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia uh, thiamine deficiencies potassium deficiencies and so on statins vitamin d deficiency is known to be associated with statin therapy uh, metformin very common association with b12 deficiency i think if you're giving especially one gram of metformin or more you should consider supplementing the b12 glucocorticoids definitely produce they produce uh, you know uh, the calcium is actually removed from the urine they also prevent the activation of vitamin d so often lead to hypocalcemia in fact sometimes lead to uh, you know calcium deficiencies and uh, we all know it also affects the bones so it will often lead to osteoporosis and fractures uh, inhaled corticosteroids also may have these effects uh, ssris you know uh, prescribed in uh, depression and other indications again will lead to calcium and vitamin d deficiencies uh, other hormones like estrogen and progesterone also lead to several vitamin deficiencies a lot of these patients young patients could be on ossipils and these could be affected by these drugs so it is very important to understand that there are a lot of drugs which can also lead to uh, diabetes uh, you know can lead to micronutrient complications uh, you know to tell you uh, the point we are trying to make in this lecture so far is that diabetes has very close relation with infections especially it affects the uh, the neutrophil functions uh, it mainly affects the cell mediated immunity it does not have too much impact on the humoral immunity so the antibody levels may often be intact but so that's in a good sense you know patients would if you give them vaccinations the vaccine would definitely work in diabetic individuals it's a good sign but at the same time the innate immunity and the uh, you know the the cell mediated immunity are definitely affected especially neutrophil functions are affected they are makes them more susceptible to infections and more susceptible to complications because of infections and there are certain infections which are seen only in diabetic individuals for example mucormycosis uh, you know uh, we are, which is we are you know recently very well uh, accustomed with i would say unfortunately uh, you have something like malignant otitis externa, emphysematous pyelonephritis, emphysematous cholecystitis, and so on and so forth. And of course, you know, studies have clearly shown that more poor the glycemic control, more likelihood of infection. And of course, micronutrients also contribute towards these complications.